Hello, uh, this is Fringe Festival Support. Uh, once again, no Edinburgh this year, obviously. Um, but we're talking to some people who might have been there with us, see how they've been getting on, check people are okay, have a chat. Um, sort of like one of those videos just to prove that they're actually still out there. Um, mental health of performers has been tested in a completely different way this year. So uh, it'll be a bit of a different conversation, but sitting to my left, probably, hopefully, who knows with Zoom, is Rich Wilson. Welcome. Hey, hey. I'm good. How are you? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. You know, yeah. been, been not especially busy. It's funny, isn't it? I've been, I've had like waves of uh, productivity and uh, busyness. Like last week was really busy, but uh, throughout lockdown, you kind of had to make your own busyness just to, to stay sane. Because obviously, yeah. like you said, we just lost everything within 20 minutes and it was like, Whoa, all right, now what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was, I was anxious to speak to you specifically because I think I, I saw you on another video somewhere saying that basically your entire calendar just got decimated in 20 minutes. Yeah. 20 minutes. Um, and it was, a, it was just, it was, it was like classic Hollywood like, moment where I had everything, everything was just, I was going to do Soho Theatre. Uh, I, was, I was ready to do Edinburgh again with another show and, I was really pushing forward and I'm like, oh, this is going to be it. I'm going to have a really good time. And then, like I say, within 20 minutes, it had all just gone. 15 years of work, just gone. And I remember just being stood in the kitchen with my phone. I'm like, wow, okay. But I wasn't panicking. I didn't like, I didn't, I, there wasn't like a heartbreak or, a, or like my, you know, like when you feel your life just disappears. Like, I just sort of stood there and I went, wow, this is what we're all going through. And I felt strangely zen about it. It wasn't, it just felt, yeah, it was an odd feeling, really odd feeling, you know? It just didn't. When, how did you start off after that then? Did you, did, you, did you immediately start throwing yourself into creative no. things? I saw, I saw people did, and good on them, but I just sort of, I just sort of took, a, took a step back, really, and gone, I'm just like, right, there's no point panicking. There's no point flinging yourself into all these different, online things it's just just have a moment and see what we can do because sometimes i saw some people and, and rightly so some people were obviously panicking and you know and, and you know i just I, like i say i felt really zen and calm and i'm like right i don't need to, i've I had the podcast still going so i knew that was going to be all right so i knew i had something even though i don't make any money from it i had something creative that i was still going to be able to do so yeah i just sort of took my time just took a step back and got pissed. <laughs> I was going to say, pretty much nobody was making any money before the thing started. So, you know, no, why, why no. start afterwards? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it wasn't like my bank account suddenly emptied. I mean, I was living gig to gig anyway. So, yeah, yeah it kind of, it kind of, yeah, it, to start with, it was almost like a bit of a breather. You go, oh, okay, all right, well, you know, I mean, and we're very lucky. There are people that are in far worse situations than us that have actually lost their jobs you know whereas with yeah. what we will be able to find a darkened corner somewhere where we can do it and what we'll have to do is rebuild the circuit it won't be as, as it was we'll have to rebuild it all chip in and whereas people that have jobs in factories and offices and things like that once that's gone it's very difficult to that's it you know there's you know you, you just find yourself on linkedin trying to find something you know and it's you know and, and then people have lost loved ones as well actually yeah. have been i know a couple of people a couple of families that have lost a few relatives from it you know and so you've got to count your blessings in that respect so you you actually i've not spoken to anybody that has but i think you thought you had it yeah there was a early on the first, yeah the first couple of weeks there was myself and Dade, my partner and then there was uh, paul sweeney who was living with us as well we he came to us just before the lockdown and yeah, we suddenly started having the symptoms like one day, well, we all had it on different days. So one day someone's taste would go and then someone else's smell would go. And then we ended up, we had the, I had the cough, the other two smoke, so they didn't have the cough, weirdly. And then you ended, we all ended up in bed for a couple of weeks and it really, and it was a really weird feeling because you're kind of wondering, going, I don't feel right, I don't feel well, I don't have any energy. So you just end up in bed, just laying there with, one minute you got fever, next minute you were you were freezing cold, and it was really odd. It was a strange, strange one. And then I got um, so I lost my sense of smell, and 
uh, I got all, I was all backed up and I, hadn't, I didn't poop for a while. And then uh, I was all constipated. And then uh, my sense of smell came back on the day that uh, I loosened. So that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good colour. That's, that's, yeah, so that's, oh, back. Oh, I'm back. That's the, viral, that's the viral clip from the entire interview. There we go. Might as well <laughs> Cheers, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so have you, have you been seeing anybody else doing stuff online? Like, is, is there anybody, I've been asking yeah. people like, if there's anybody that you think, oh yeah, they've, they've really smashed it actually. It's actually given them, they've really embraced the opportunity and been making good things. Uh, there's been loads of people of really, uh, always be comedy that I MC last night, uh, James Gill's gig. And that has been thriving throughout this. He's had some phenomenal guests. And he's got what what people learned suddenly is that through Zoom you can have like what they call front row, so you can have actual audience members that you can actually hear, which is such such a blessing because yeah. there's other Zoom gigs I've done and there's no one, there's nothing, there's no reaction. You kind of finish what you're doing and then you shut your laptop and you sort of just stood there. It's really weird, but with that one. Yeah, you can actually you can interact with people as well. I found that as well. What people get on, get on board with more is when you're interacting with them. So if you go live on Facebook, then you're interacting with their comments and things like that. And people really dig that. And so I'll be, there was so anything that's like that has been really good. Um, yeah, it's dif difficult to do a show without the interaction, like without that feedback. It just feels so. incredibly flat. Yeah. Oh man, you have no, you don't realise how important the energy is of an audience. You know, that even if they're just watching that, that energy that they're watching you do what you're doing, you need it. And it's not in a, in a attention seeking way. There was a lot of that as well. People going, oh, well, we need the attention. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't need the attention. I like doing what I'm doing, but I don't need, I don't need it. I don't need to get up in the morning and have someone clap me to the bathroom. You know, it's like, it's, you know, I do it because I love doing it. So yeah, so that, that was good. There's been a few gigs like that that have really thrived. Tim Burgess from the Charlatans really, yeah, yeah. really kicked on with um, the listening parties on Twitter, which I've joined in with a few. That's been brilliant. Yeah. Actually getting members of the band from, from all these classic albums. She's been, in, she's been brilliant. So that's been something. Yeah. yeah Ch been chance to catch up on the last 30 years of music. Yeah, it's been excellent. It's been excellent. Like talking to David Gedge from The Wedding Present you know, via Twitter. It's been brilliant. Yeah. Loved it. So there's been a few things. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, when you say it's not the attention, it's, like, it's the feedback that you want, really. I mean... Yeah, you just... I enjoy doing it. I enjoy making people laugh. And I enjoy... Because we're caught jesters, aren't we? That's what we are, really. That we're not changing lives, not curing anything. But what we are bringing is a bit of happiness and a and a bit of respite from the shit that's going on in the world, you know, or yeah. taking the piss out of what's going on. So on that, in that respect, that's why, that's why I love doing it. But I spoke to a couple of comedians and they were saying, they said, oh, just, just, we need the attention. No, we're attention seekers. And I'm not like, that. sort of, but that's not really why I do it. You just, you bring joy to people. Bring joy. Who doesn't want a bit of joy? Just some crap what's in his beard. And that's, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> um, so no Edinburgh this year. Had you had you got plans? Were you were you going to be yeah. doing that? I had a brand new show, all not ready to go, but it was on the way, and it was all brand new stuff because I'd spent the last fifteen years kind of building up the last one, and then you kind of go right. I can't. I've done all that now. A lot of people have seen it now, so I need to come up with something else. So. It was, it was called uh, Face Down, Noises Off. And it was all about trust. You know, when I've, I've noticed where, I know I used to, when I was up to no good, I'd have my phone face down with all the, all the notifications off so that no one knew what was going on. Uh, and that's what the show was about. And then, yeah, I was all ready to go. And I'm, I'm really upset that Edinburgh, I didn't, I didn't think I would miss it until it got to the end of July. And then I suddenly went, ah, oh, we would, wow, well, we would. I got, a, I got, a, uh, um, I got a memory thing from Facebook and oh, here's your memories. And it was us traveling up to Edinburgh last year. Yeah. And I suddenly felt a real ache in my heart. Like, oh, yeah. yeah and, it's, and it's every day as well, isn't it? You're getting like notifications. It's like, here you are six years ago in Edinburgh. Here you are. Yeah. Four years ago in Edinburgh. I know. Faces, like, of people that, faces, yeah. faces of people that you only ever see in Edinburgh, you know, and it's a real shame. Like Katie and Karen Corran and, 
who've done the who run the Gilded Balloon and just seeing their faces, you know, oh, I only ever see them when I'm in Edinburgh, you know, and, and a lot of acts as well. You don't really because it's you're in this bubble in Edinburgh. You're so you're just so far removed from reality. The gas bills don't matter and the water bills don't matter, and it just all it is is about the, the, the shows and about what you're doing for a month, and it's and it's so great. And I'm really upset that we're not there. Yeah, we were joking the other day. One of the good things about Edinburgh being cancelled is that, like, so long as you hadn't kind of put your money in already, that those savings that you'd normally be expecting to lose in Edinburgh, you've yeah. actually got to try and get you through this. Yeah, um, that's it. I think there's a bit of that. Yeah, especially well, I, I, you know, there's been the, the knock-on effect of us not being in Edinburgh has been, it's been huge. You know, the people that make all that money from us when we come and rent their flats, the printers, the cabbies, the chip shop that charges you seven pound fifty for sausage and chips. Um, you know, everyone's everyone. And now the recycling places will be struggling because we're not there dumping our flyers. Yeah. So it's still, it just affects so many people on so many levels. It's it was a shame. Our favorite, always our favorite part of Edinburgh, throwing away like five thousand of something that's got your face on it. That's that's yeah. amazing. Very therapeutic. Just sick and tired of seeing them. Just uh, and I hate flyering. I always get someone else to do it because I can't. I can't physically bring myself to stand on a street corner and try and sell myself. It's. I think it's especially, it's especially bad when your picture's on the flyer and you have to go up to someone and go, "Come and see me." Yeah. I'm already, I'm already seeing you. What are? What yeah. else you <laughs> and people think because you're flyering yourself. They go, well, this must be shit. He can't yeah. be doing very well. He's doing his own show. Yeah. Can't you yeah, just so, give, me, give me a quick five minutes now and I'll decide whether I'm going to come and see it. Yeah. Or what will happen is you think you fling yourself around the festival doing all slots everywhere. You go, oh, because then it's like an advert for yourself. People have seen me and then they'll come to my show. But then a lot of people go, well, I've already seen him. I saw him for 10 minutes yesterday. I don't need to go and see a whole hour of that. And so it's a... <laughs> It's a, yeah, it's a funny one. Different, difficult to know how to pitch it, but regardless of any of all the negatives and the whatever, I I really miss it, and I'm really sorry that it's not that we're not there. But hopefully next year we'll be back. Well, I was going to say, thinking of the positives, like, <coughs> thing, things are starting to come back now, a little mm. bit. Have you yeah, been? A bit. You've you've done a couple of of gigs already. Yeah, I've done a few actually. People are they're finding. Well, I, the first one I did was in the in the, the back garden of a of a, a calf in uh, in uh, in South End. Brilliant little place, Temple Calf. If you've ever, if you've down, find yourself down that way, it's a really nice place. And uh, Ross McGrain, who does smash, little smash comedy, he's been putting on gigs on a Sunday in the back garden, and they've been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, we did. I've done a few, and they've been really good. They're all outside. Um, yeah, they've been alright. I didn't do any of the driving gigs. They sounded horrendous. People flashing their lights at you instead of laughing. That's, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, I was just talking to Tin and he did, he did one of the big outdoor gigs. It wasn't one of the drive-ins, but it, he said it was just very weird because there's just so much space and people are yeah. separated out <coughs> a bit. People are spread bit. out. We did, we did Blenheim Palace and they had to be 10 metres away from the stage. So you couldn't even really interact. They were... It was still quite far away. So you just had to just do your stuff and hopefully you could hear some laughter on the horizon. <laughs> Lenin Palace is a bit prestige, isn't it? That's, that's, oh, really? that's not a bad one. I can't remember who was booking it. It was Picnic at the Palace. Um, and they had, so they had comedy and they had music as well. So um, Omar was on, the soul singer Omar and a few others. And it was a really... Lenin Palace is, is my word. I've never seen it. It's spectacular. In it, you know, I've, I've not been, I don't think. Oh, it's amazing. And we got this really, we got, a, we got told the history of it and why it exists. And yeah, it's beautiful, really nice. Right. Yeah, nice to get, nice to get the tour. Isn't it I've, just, I've, it saved me I've a couple of my list. My I've national, Blenheim, uh, you, should go. Blen you should go. I've got Blenheim Palace and a cafe in South End to, uh, to there you go. <laughs> That's all you need, really, isn't it? I'm helping you. I'm just doing that, I'm just doing a bit. <laughs> I don't know if Blenheim Palace needs it, but definitely the cafe in in, uh, in South End does. So you staying happy? You, you you feel like we're we're kind of coming out of this? Is there? Um, I don't. I have I have days of despair 
and wondering what what we'll do. I'm not even, I'm not really, I know that comedy, live comedy will come back at some point in, 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 one, in, in one way, shape or form. It might not come back as it was and it's going to take us a lot. It'll take us all to chip in and, and, and rebuild it. But I'm sort of focusing on, I'm looking, I'm, apply, I'm applying for uni. I'm, I'm applying to study psychology. So, you know, cause I can do that. And then when comedy, I'd start to kind of pick up I can do it at the same time so I just feel it's a good time to start sort of exploring other avenues just seeing what so, else is going on. psychology and comedy are pretty much bedfellows aren't they They're pretty applicable much science, I'm, applicable I'm probably, sciences. Further, I'm probably further down the down the line than I realize <laughs> because of the podcast I'm kind of I've been getting lots of messages from people saying that the podcast has got them through a lot of the dark times so that's that's really sort of kept me I really enjoyed that, and so I just thought, right, maybe I'll just get into go that go that way, you know, start. Because you've added the second, you've added the second podcast now, haven't you? you, you you're now an yes. equal opportunities employer. Your, your, first, <laughs> one, your first one Doing was focusing my... on men's mental health. Yes. Insane in the membrane. Insane um, in the membrane was the first one, and then the second one is we're doing this, we're doing it in seasons, and it's insane in the membrane, and that's more about me learning about women. You know, because I know I know bits, but I don't. I didn't know as much as I thought, and so I thought what we could do was talk to strong, you know, strong women that you know that have got a good story to tell, and are and I could learn from, and so that's where that started. So that's been really enlightening. You know, I didn't even like even I've said this loads, but even about periods, which I know not all women want to talk about periods all the time, but I've never sat down and had a conversation about what it actually feels like to go through that. Yeah, and what it feels like with the, that internal body clock like ticking down, you know that I don't really know what that feels like. So it's, it's weird, been, isn't it? Ch childbirth is often the example that they use. It's like, oh, you'll never understand what it's like to give birth, but but yeah. then there's something else that, that you do every month that we've never discussed. And yeah, 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 exactly. And that's what, and that's so I sort of start from the beginning. I'm like, right, okay, I don't know about all these things, so let's ask. So it's been really good. I've got a, I've got some more guests coming up. Um, I've got Danny St. James as a trans woman and uh, I don't know anything about trans people or trans trans anything so we've got Danny on and then I, again I just went right what does it feel like right right just from the beginning you know asking the questions that you can't ask when you're on Twitter because you'll get cancelled. I was gonna so, say you're a you're a renaissance man Rich like most, most other people <laughs> are closing their brains off to this sort of stuff and you're opening up. I've never felt so alive I never felt this way at school being academic was not was not part of my thing. I was too busy worrying about going to see bands and, and chasing after girls and things when I was a kid. But suddenly I found I'm just this I've just got this unquenchable thirst to learn stuff. And it's been it's been really good. So that's been a positive coming from uh, the lockdown. We've also got a new podcast starting called uh, Insane in the Them Brain, where I'll be talking to non binary and trans people and things like that. And just okay. yeah, just because you know, most a lot of people don't know i don't know and uh, you you're afraid to ask because you're afraid that you'll just get shut down so that's yeah. so i thought right let's open up an avenue where we can ask these questions so that'll be coming out uh later on in the year so yeah you still i'm getting stuck in doing stuff we've got plans we've got plans so is, there, is there more live stuff like is there more live stuff being offered is the phone ringing it started to um it's still you couldn't live off it it's right you'll get a bunch of gigs in a row and then, you know, it's not regular. It's not every weekend. I mean, that was something else I didn't understand. What you do with a Saturday night. I had no idea. I'm like, what do you, what, do, what, what, what do we do? <laughs> so yeah, it's been, that's been, that's been one, but the, yeah, the gigs are coming back slowly. Um, I've got the boat show coming up next month. Uh, but they I mean, that normally holds 150, 200 people. And that's only 30 capacity now, maximum. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I think to, we have to be sensible about this and just go, look, this is not coming back this year, next year, possibly, but nothing will happen until they find a vaccine, you know, or yeah, yeah until it becomes like, because what will happen is that we'll, it will just come in, it'll be just part of our ecosystem and we'll have to have jabs and things like that, like we do with the flu. But until they figure that out, Every, it's just going to be this world of unknowing until then. And so I think we just have to be 
just have to be cautious, you know, and just and be sensible, you know, don't accept, don't expect everything to just come flying back and we're back to normal because that'll be, it's going to be a while yet, I think. Which sounds are you, negative. Are you, are you working on a vaccine? Are you, <laughs> if it, inv <laughs> if it involves alcohol, sourdough and uh, Pornhub, then maybe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're on the, are you on the sourdough train as well? Yeah, I, 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 I got, we I got a board of that. Well, Jade is Jade's really Jade, what the way Jade relaxes is is, uh, is by cooking, but really not just your everyday meals, like really extravagant stuff. So, we we were really lucky that Jade would make these extraordinarily amazing meals, and she made bread and kombucha, and like, they've got this big jug full of kombucha, and then that's something that amazes me. Scobies, the, the scobies that the kombucha comes from. When you come down, you walk down into the kitchen one day, and then there's another one. There's like they they like they breed, and I'm like, what? Yeah, that's been, that's been fun. So we got about six scobies. And if anyone's watching this, you want to make your own kombucha, drop me a line because they're breeding like bloody gremlins. <laughs> nah. Like sea, sea monkeys. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Honestly, I, I'm not. It's not like I've been living in a tree and I don't know these things exist. But I've never been around them before. So it's been quite the adventure for me. But, um, I was going to say, it sounds like you've had a lot on. Yeah, well, that was it. So we went, we were strangely zen at the beginning. We took a step back. But then ideas started to come and Jade got asked to do a few things. And because uh, Paul and I are comedians and she was like, why don't we all, why don't you join in with this? So we ended up doing all these different things. Or it'd be one night, I'd, I'd had a couple of drinks. So I'd just go live and I was DJing on Facebook Live and, you know, and, and talking to people and, and Jade's done the same, and yeah, we we managed to keep ourselves active, you know, keep the keep the dark darkness away. I've not even ironed my fucking shirt. <laughs> my mother will be horrified. Not I've only just started wearing jeans again. <laughs> just wearing shorts for the entire time. But I think it's you like, have to. It's easy to just to just let it all just crush you into a duvet. You have to physically stand up and go, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm just going to go out. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to go and ride my bike or, you know, and yeah, you just have to physically make yourself get out and do stuff, you know. I'm going to grab hold of that positivity and pocket it. And I'm going to end yeah. this here because that's a very nice place to finish. You're welcome. It's been it's great talking to you, mate. And you. Give my love to Lucy as well. I hope you oh, do. Love you all right. And to all of you. It's been great.